This is always my favorite part. I'm so happy to be back. I just need to wait until the video loads and I can see you all. So it's coming, it's coming. Okay, there it is. Ah, okay, hello. Um, so you know me, I like to know when you're here. So pop into the chat when you're actually here and I can start seeing all of your lovely faces. Um, I think this is my, yeah, this is my first week after having gone officially the every other week thing. <laughs> so, um, oh, there's Tony, hello from Montreal. Okay, you guys are starting to come in. So uh, I have, I'm gonna start being really good about reminding everyone which are the on weeks and which are the off weeks. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Becky. Everyone's starting to come in. Um, so last week, where was I? Oh, last week I actually took a tiny break. So um, I'll tell you guys all about that in a little bit. Uh, hello from Southern Illinois, Georgia, Virginia, DC, New Mexico, Annapolis, Virginia. Oh, you're all coming in. It's so nice. Um, and I have been in front of the screen all morning already because I've taught, I had a teacher training session that I was teaching and um, now this, and now I have another teacher training session this evening for, uh, to train the teachers for another event. I'm probably not supposed to tell you what, so I won't. Um, so hello, hello from Denmark, hello Ontario. Um, I, I did have a good rest, although a funny thing happened on my rest, which is um, my hosting plan for my website um, had expired. And so I chose a different hosting plan for a lot of complicated reasons that don't matter. But what I didn't know was that the email settings would not transfer. And here's the crazy mystery. I would get one or two emails. It's not like all my emails stopped, but I thought, oh, wow, it's, you know, it's really nice. It's been very slow. So I'm able to keep on top of business while I'm out of town. I got back on Monday, well, late Sunday night, actually. And only then did my phone and my laptop show the little exclamation point of email not working. And I logged on and sure enough, my email had stopped downloading. So I got to end my vacation to over 500 unread emails. So that was super fun. Um, so yeah, more about that later. So before we begin, I should do that semi-professional thing of saying, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get notifications, which is particularly important now that we're every other week, just so you might, you know, not forget, might not forget. I don't think that's English. Um, and of course, hit the like button, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, thank you, Melissa. Affinity is fire. This is affinity. This is just the pullover version. The um, cardigan version, I finished knitting the sleeves on my vacation and I just have to seam it together. And um, I need to film a video of me picking up the button band and my unvented button because we're gonna do my unvented button. Okay. But today we have a very special guest and she doesn't know this, but I'm wearing this sweater on purpose because um, it, I wouldn't say the sweater, I would, <laughs> like so many things in knitting, we see someone else's um, innovation and we use that as a jumping off point. So I had gotten a gift of the Coco Knits Method book from Julie, who you're about to meet. And um, I loved it and, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't really quite use it as designed to create this crazy dolman construction that I wanted. So I'm gonna tell her how I, how I was inspired by her method and I used it as a jumping off point. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about how she developed that, that method and all that good stuff. So without further ado, since some of you are probably not here to see me, but here to see, woo, 
literally, I tried to put in parentheses coconuts, by the way, and I couldn't, it, it wouldn't fit. So I tried <laughs> it's to, fine. It's fine. I wanted to, I wanted yeah. originally to put that in parentheses. It wouldn't fit. Yeah. Rice and burger doesn't fit with anything. I got it. I got that in. At first I thought, well, should I do Julie W and parentheses? You could just do Julie coconuts. Okay. See, that's what I wasn't sure because on the off chance that there's like anybody here that doesn't know who you are or doesn't know, or, or rather, I don't know if you've ever seen this. Do you ever know, have you ever met people that know you, know coconuts? And don't know they're. Yeah. Cause I have. I've, I've had I never that. thought of that. I mean, that's kind of my goal. I'm not a person who wants to be out there. Well, because really, I, I was talking, I was talking about the, either the blocking board or the sweater kit, something. And I mentioned your name in a class and someone said, oh, so the, the, oh, you mean the, um, the, the woman that does that top down construction? Oh, does she use these blocking boards? She is sure does. You, is that how you heard about them? And I was like, well, sure she does, does because she <laughs> invented them. And yeah, for then, traveling and teaching for that exact reason. Them. <laughs> That's so do you remember at all how we first met and met via email? Because I've always wondered if you have connected me, Patty Lyons, the teacher, with this person that was your very first wholesale client. At Lion Brand. No, at the point. No. That was me. Is that before Lion? Oh yeah. So it oh, was when gosh, they were yeah. in the orange bags. Oh yeah. So you, so you had, I'm, and now I, and I don't even remember whether I bought it or I got it as a gift. So this is the, the, the part I don't remember is how I first got my very and I feel like Lion Brand was one of our very first customers. So that means this is the point 2007. Oh my gosh, that's when I started Coconut. So this is so, very beginning. Okay, so let me no, tell I you. I did not make that connection. So you so here's what I, can I always wondered this. So you were making them yourself. You didn't have a distributor yet. I think you said you were making them in your garage. Oh yeah, I was assembling every little part. I was counting out the T-pins into little containers, putting stickers so, on. I think I got it as a gift. And, I, and inside of it was a, was a little cardboard, which I still have. Oh, I should have brought it out of my, it's in oh. that closet. My original, my orange bag. I still have it, my, oh, my original oh. kit. And in fact, I, so I, that was from, yeah, 2006 or seven, whenever I first got it, it was like a brand new item. And I'll often pass those blocks around in, um, in uh, live class and I'll say, give a squeeze to that foam. Yeah, um, and you know, this year we finally also got, so there was no formada, no, there was no, never any formaldehyde, which is, which is why ours don't smell chemically. Okay. You know, when you get some of the, the cheaper, yeah. You know, the foam, like you don't know where that was made. That was blown well, out of some chemical plant. They also get so hard and never, crumbly and disintegrate after a while. Yeah. Yeah. There's quality issues. We have found one place in the world that will make these for us because they're formaldehyde free. And this year we also, not that I know what formidide is, but we also got the formidide out. So if they were to wind up in a landfill, which hopefully they won't, I'm using mine from 2006. Like no end in sight, they they last forever. But if they should wind up in a in a landfill, there are no chemicals. It won't break down into anything harmful. I mean, you don't oh, want them in a landfill, but no, no, you want them under your sweater. So like, there's a, here, there's I'm a little in, in uh, I'm in California where we're basically burning. Climate change is real, people. We got to start treating Mother Earth with more respect. So we do what we can. Well, that's why I mean, I, I finally replaced the photograph uh, that I had in a PowerPoint because it had that orange bag and, and that and is that so not your branding anymore. But so, was, so what happened was I had, there was a cardboard little insert, a little brochure and it had an email. 
And so I emailed you and I, and I said, I introduced myself and I said, I just took over uh, as the manager of the Point NYC in, in New York City, I'd like to sell your kits. And you said, oh, I don't, I can't, I, I don't, I didn't, I don't take wholesale. Sitting there like counting out tea pins. Yeah. So <laughs> I, may, I, I stalked and bothered and stalked and bothered and stalked and bothered. And I said, listen, I'm not talking about a, what if, what if I did an order of six and you just ship them to me whenever you have six, like just pretend you have, you had six individual customers and you said, but I can't, I can't do 50%. I can't. I said, okay, that's fine. What about 25%? So I stalked and harassed you oh and the point NYC on Bedford street was the very first shop I to ever carry your cat. Have any memory of that, which is so weird but even if i did i wouldn't have known it was you because i associate you with lion brand that's when i like and that and that was I me just actually met you and put it that together was, that was me just like uh contacting you from you know from the point because i went from the point right over to lion brand they they like wooed me it, uh, it was a long story but um <laughs> yeah but i always wondered like does she remember yeah. that tiny little 300 square foot no, no, doesn't I, exist anymore. Knitting shop in um, the, the the village. I completely didn't remember that. We go back even further than I thought. Yeah, I I used to stalk and bother. Do you remember Sanguine Griffin? Do you remember yes. that? Yes. So that yeah. was a yarn that was like people would line up forever at Rhinebeck. I got her to sell me her yarn at the point. I would go, I would go, I didn't want just- And you left the point and it disappeared. I'm gonna guess. Well, I, I took over the point because I was going to, I thought it would be fun to run a yarn store, to own a yarn store when I quit theater. <laughs> um, and so I said I would manage it for a year to really learn the business. And then if I was interested, I'd purchase it. And one weekend I could see, okay, so this is not a viable business model. Oh my gosh. Every yarn shop owner I know, and I know hundreds, that's sort of the last day they knit for fun um, is the day before. They, I mean, you don't have time to knit. You don't have, it's 24 seven, basically oh for no pay. You Plus, gotta. It was in such debt. I mean, the, the, I, the big wake up call for me was I took over the shop in August and I went to my sister's house for Thanksgiving. And when you look in the mirror and you're changing a little bit every day, you don't see it. But I walked in the door to my sister's house and she took one look at me and she was like, oh, what? what's the matter? Cause I apparently had lost a ton of weight. I had bags under my eyes. I was all from the stress. Which is just completely the opposite of what the outside world thinks running a yarn shop is. They're like, oh, right. you can hang out and knit all day. It's like, I don't know any yarn shop owners. No. I think in, in my Wednesday um, knitting wisdom is thing I do on Instagram. Um, I think I said one day was like, um, I love my job because I love sitting around and knitting all day said no yarn shop owner ever. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Did you see today's? It was in honor of you. Today's Wednesday wisdom, wisdom was in oh, honor of you. You know what? I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of Instagram. And we all, so I have a little team okay. of the, four of us who share it. So my designated days are Saturday and Sunday. So it's definition inventiveness. Oh, I love a it. Unique, a unique way to create with sticks and string. And then I said um, that this was inspired by my chat with you I because um, I, I never asked you where and how you developed your method. Like it what was, was your well, jumping point? You know what? It, it, it was, uh, so I had a sweater company before I did hand knitting. That I knew. You know. Okay. So I always was on the other end of knitting, the, 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 the production end of it and selling it in shops. And so China happened. And so what had been a, you know, you could sell a $200 
hand knit sweater. And then suddenly that was now $20. So that was okay. Because what I found trying to run a sweater like production company was that it was all, it was like thinking you were going to knit all day because you own a yarn shop. <laughs> all, suddenly I was invoicing, chasing people for payment, trying to keep production going. It was not creatively fulfilling, let's just say. So I was, that was fine. China came along and it was like, okay, I'm going to move on to something where I can maybe knit a little more um, and moved into designing for hand knitting. What was the question? <laughs> so the, was there was there an inspiration oh, right. or a jumping off point for the method? <laughs> yes. So or did I, you just I, say I, like, oh, was it I like overcoming something that annoyed you? Which more to it. like finished, um, I don't want to say store bought looking, but I'm I'm like more interested in kind of the the uh, the end result than I am the like stitch patterns or whatever. So traditionally knitting is in pieces. So, you know, you got a back, a front and two sleeves and you got to seam all that. And the first thing that happened was people wanted seamless. And I was like, I don't mind seaming, but sure, let's try that. So I tried kind of seamless. I love English tailoring, which is, yep. This is what I've got see, going it's on red, here. So I'm not sure you can see it, but. Yeah. And it's, and it's, uh, oh, there you can see mine. Cause I've got open. Yeah. I did mine with yarn overs on this one. Oh, so actually, it takes yeah. what would be a join, like traditionally that would be a seam and it would sit right up on top of your shoulder. And with hand knitting, that can be a clumsy place to have, like the eye kind of goes there. So I love having English tailoring, which puts that join to, to your back. Yes. It also makes a little 3D pocket for your shoulders to sit in. So even if you do kind of a Lucy type sweater, it's probably going to sit on your shoulders because it's the difference between wearing a tube sock and turning a heel. So now your heel sits in that little pocket you've turned and stays on your foot. So the same with this. Now you now, now my husband notices it on his Uniqlo sweaters because that's what Uniqlo yeah. does, and he never really noticed that. And they're not they're not that expensive sweaters, but they they fit him really well. Yep, it runs the gamut from high end to Kmart. You'll once you know what to look for, you'll see English tailing everywhere. Anytime that seam runs from, it might start at the top of the shoulder, but it runs to the back and joins the, the back top of the sleeve. Um, so I was doing seamless bottom up and still having to do a little bit of seaming up here. So then my next challenge to myself was, could I do it top down and seamless and completely get rid of the seams? And it was trial and error. I literally had to pick up completely differently. I tried traditional pickups. Um, I tried traditional, you know, more knit front and back and M ones. And I just had to reinvent everything. Um, and then I was like, who is going to follow this? <laughs> like, is this too out there? But I finally got it all figured out to where I could teach it in one class. And it and was- And the, 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 everyone talks about like the, the, you know, the graph or the grid or whatever you call it, the- Yeah, yeah. The, you the, know, the plug and play aspect of that, which is in the book too. So, yeah. so if you, you know, don't take the live class that all of that yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, in, is in the book. Yeah, um, and we really like tried to lay it out step by step. So if you have the mental capacity during a pandemic and an election year and everything else, good luck. And, but, yeah. and doesn't the phrase pandemic and election year also just sound redundant at this point? I, I just feel like they're the same thing. Yeah. It's like saying, you know, like during a plague and a tragedy, I mean, they're yeah. just, it's just, it's all the same. Yeah. Um, oh, crazy. hello, Chris. Hello, Susan. New people yeah. are joining So if it's like too much, if you want someone to like, it's in the book, but I totally get, like I would take a class on how to make a pom-pom at this point. Just, just show me. I, I can't, I don't have the wherewithal to focus on even a paragraph. So I do try it like I'm, you know, teach it different online venues to try and take people through it but it is all in the book and we do have videos for every step we don't have like the book as a video because we want to push people oh. to yarn shops yeah to try and take the class back into yeah. four times when we yeah. used to be able to gather 
Um, so totally it's all angry. in the book. And then if you get to like the way I do the increases, you can just go to the website and there's a video that shows you how we do those. And then you say, you know, what is this? How, how are you picking up these stitches? There's a video for that. Right. So, and so that the concept, uh, I, I loved the concept. Um, and I had, uh, basically, this is the pullover version, this is the cardigan version. I had wanted to try to take the basic shape that I had done for a sweater that I did for Vogue, which was a dolman construction, but then yeah. a pickup sleeve um, yeah. in this method. I've done a couple of I I sort of just slightly tweaky tweaked it. So instead of in, instead of casting on here, and then increases because yeah. that, that just wouldn't have worked. It was Judy's Magic cast on as a provisional cast on along the center back, short rows up to here. And then it was, it, then I, I, the pickup is totally different because I wanted this, um, yeah, you wanted visible, this little yeah. visible seam thing. Yeah. But it was, it was a, it was a jumping off point of the inspiration of the concept. Mm -hmm. I then, ju I just, you know, yeah, a little bit. And like this one is a is a is a more traditional set in sleeve. It's garter stitch, but you can kind of see the increases how it makes a little set in sleeve. Oh yeah. And then I found also if I tried to go drop shoulder with it, I couldn't incorporate the sleeve because geometry makes right. the sleeves go straight up. Right. It's the craziest thing. So like this one is called Renee and it's a, it's just a sweatshirt. It's really wide. And so there's that, that nice line that, that, that it um, lays on the back. But then I did go back and pick up, it's a really big kind of dolman sleeve. I went back and picked up the sleeve and knitted it separately because when I tried to incorporate that much of a dolman sleeve, literally you had a body and the sleeves went straight up right and like yeah that doesn't that's, work mathematically not that's why i did like a little mini like if this were oh and yeah. somebody did it without picking up the sleeves so they did it yeah. just with that yeah. short sleeve yeah, yeah. um but yeah, yeah. What, what was i going to tell you you just you just said something that mind oh oh i know so you and also carol feller do you know carol yeah are always my examples when the thing that, that I'm on my little proselytizing trip about is if you have a designer that is making decisions for what's right for their silhouette and the yarn they've chosen and the construction they've chosen, follow that construction. <laughs> So when people are obsessed with, um, well, can I, I, I'm, I, I want to do, I want to do that design, but I want to converge it in the round or I want to do this, but I want to converge the round. I always say, well, don't, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a reason this is in the round. Decisions I, were love, made. I love when people go off. Like I had someone come to well, stitch I love when they go off but not when they go off and then they fail because they're like, oh, that's why that piece was seen. But then they know why. Right, <laughs> including me, because yeah. I did it multiple yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. I did, the, there was this, like I even had a knitter who, you know, she already knew how to pick up stitches. She already knew how to do increases. And so when she tried to knit some samples for the book, um, I had to send them back. It's like, because the whole sweater is, hanging on these foundations right and it's the difference between kind of a raglan that just grows and stretches these are solid foundations up right. here and that's why the sweaters hold their shape and she was like i don't need to do it her way i'll do it my way and it was like yeah i tried that too and the whole thing just stretched down and you had these big loose things it's like no you really need to do the pickups the way i say to do them right um it makes a big difference but then, but then you learn. Yeah. I mean, I love when people go off the rails too. Like that's what my video sweater classes are all about. Like make them be whatever you want. Yeah. But what I never understand. And then I had the opposite. I had someone that wanted to take one of my 
things that was in the round and, or not even my pattern. They took somebody's pattern that was in the round and said, they had just read Kate's Atherley's brilliant article about ode to seeming and why you should not be afraid of seams and why they're good and why they're used and why. And she said, well, now that I know seams are better, I want to convert this in the round pattern to seamed. And I said, well, but if it was designed to be worked seamlessly by a designer that knows how to do that, they're making their silhouette choices, their construction choices, their yarn choices for that. Yeah. But if you're doing a pattern that was thought through and the yarn choices and the construction choices need those seams, um, like the, the, the yeah. big giant knitting fail that I did was a pattern called the Gatsby pullover. It was on the cover of Interweave Knits. This was many years ago. It's knit in negative ease. It's, it's rib and it was designed flat and seamed. Now, the funny thing, looking back on this, is how much work I put into avoiding mattress stitch. Oh, I'm going to convert it into the round. And so now I know how I've got to remove these balancing stitches and I can do that. And then, oh, wait, now I'm, instead of seaming the sleeve, I'm going to make it a top-down uh, short row sleeve cap. Like I, so much work. I've never worn the sweater oh. because <laughs> when I think, oh yeah, you know what else is knit? You know what else is in the round? Negative ease, rib, a tube sock. Yeah. When you put on a tube sock and then you walk, does that rib stay perfectly straight up and down or does it torque and twist? And that's what happened to the sweater. And I was oh. like, oh, that's right. why it was seamed. Right. God. Yeah, I've made every mistake and that's why, yeah. Well, and then, and then the other sort of thing along kind of helping um, customers because of getting emails about, you know, changing and everything. I had already published uh, Antonio pattern and one other using my new, like I'd figured out this method. But then came the part where you've got your little shoulder, everything here, and then you have to, now you're gonna increase in the sleeve section at one rate, on the front at a different rate, and also a different rate on the neckline and on the back at a different rate. And I felt so bad for all the, at the same time. So yeah. I would have these worksheets for people. Right. And that's what led to my color-coded worksheets. So the subtitle of my book is You Can Drink and Knit. <laughs> well, well, not until you filled out your worksheet. And, and here's when you a, out, it's just dummy proof. You and just, I'll, give you, I'll give you another subtitle. <laughs> you can get excellent fit if you give up the idea of having the same rate of shaping all the way around. Because oh. when people say to me, oh, I hate raglan. They don't mean they hate the sleeve construction that goes from under the arm to the neck. They mean what they think of as raglan is top down raglan where every round increases eight stitches yeah. and the width of the neck has to magically become the right number of stitches yeah. for the chest minus the number of stitches for the width of the body at the same time you've used the number of rows for the armhole. And what are the odds of that? Yeah, yeah. Like and I also don't them. like those lines on me. They 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 fit my body weird. Right. I mean, raglan is not for all. It can yeah. make a chest look larger and and um. Uh, yeah, and when you're already broad shouldered, then and then and then you have like boobs on a tray. Like, yeah, and I was like going to say, make your shoulders like look nice wider. Triangle of here they are. I'm going to serve them up. It's like. Oh, Eileen says, I love Julie's worksheets. And Jin Jin asks, what it, what's the next in the horizon for Julie in terms of variation or extension of English tailoring? What should we look forward to? Oh, oh, oh man. Fun right now with this, with this doing more off the shoulder. So everything like the book 
And the Why original- doing this? Like I can see- Like you can see down, in, down on my lap. So this one I already showed you is, this is not a new pattern. This has been out for a while called Renee. But this, but this really off the shoulder, more dolman, I'm having fun with. And this is a fun little, like I turned up the hem uh, and put a little drawstring oh, in there. Oh, wait, show that. Oh, that's cute. It's, it was when I went to go turn the hem up. There you go. Nice. I decided to turn it to the front. I'd never seen that done before. And the three needle bind off is done on the front. And so you've got that exposed. I love a visible seam. I love a visible seam too. I love it. Yeah. And same with the little eye cord running down the front. So yeah. that is literally my sweatshirt. It's just like an easy to wear, really off the shoulder sweatshirt. So then I did the kind of pullover version of it. This is the Sarah cardigan done in half fisherman rib because I- I love a fisherman rib. I hate uh, brioche. That's all right. I can never it. get into a rhythm with it. So I prefer fisherman. You mean the process, not the product. You you hate the process. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Um, yeah. yeah, you could kind of try and do this in brioche, but again, there is that long seam right off the shoulder. Same, so it's sort of a modified coconuts method. Hangs to the back, and you knit the whole body with the button band incorporated, and then you go back and pick up the sleeves. I I gotta say, I, I love an incorporated button band. I, 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 I say that even though the next, the cardigan version of this is not an incorporated button band, but I've done them in the yeah, past. It doesn't always but I, work, but- I do enjoy yeah. them. Yeah. On this one, I have you turn some short rows once in a while to keep it tidy. That's what I had to do for, um, uh, it took me forever to figure it out. I did a cardigan for Vogue and I need, and it was a softly spun single ply alpaca. Ugh. not a lot of yeah structure I, you know for magazines you don't get to choose and so I want I it was long and just like you hate doing brioche what people don't understand about sometimes our design choices is if I don't want to knit it I'm not going to design it yeah so I thought I'm not I don't want to pick up all of those stitches because it was a knee length cardigan so I, I did the incorporated and I did a twisted rib with a smaller needle. So there was a DPN hanging there for the button band, uh, knit, 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 boom, then DPN, but I had to pop in the short rows. Too lazy. Yeah, I just do yeah. short rows. Yeah. And I found that that it's so forgiving. Like people will email me and say, oh, I'm, I'm, you're asking me like for my size, I have something going on here and also a short row. And I was like, it doesn't matter when you do the short rows. Oh, oh, you can like, just can I move it? And and when it, when you're looking at your knitting and it's looking like, oh, maybe my button band is getting a little yeah. bit longer than my body, work a short row. It's, it's so, I've done it before where I've forgotten to do them. So I had this long stretch and then I have like four, like really closely spaced together. Yeah. You just you sneak them in. Tell. You can't tell. Um, so I'm having fun with that. I'm working on another one where it's, where it's also like way off the shoulder. Um, and then... What else am I doing? Do you have any of the sweaters handy there? Um, uh, um, I have to put my readers on. Um, Elise is asking, are those sweaters in your book? So I, I, yes. the newest so, one isn't. Yeah, no, held up. these are not. We, because the book's already out there published, so I can't add sweaters to it. So these are individual patterns on our website. You can just but there's them. a bunch of sweaters in the book. It's not just yeah, nothing. Yeah, there are, there's like nine patterns. Yeah. And you can just keep tweaking them and re-knitting them. Um, this one is in the book and this is a new one I just did though. Um, there, you can see that little shoulder detail. This one is Emma, the basic Emma. It's a really good one to learn on. Um, in the book, it's done in really bulky yarn. This one is Blue Sky Brush Surrey. So it's not bulky heavy, but it's, the same gauge as the really bulky one. What's the I one the called that you that that you have a couple different versions of, and you have them in different yarns, and it's shocking how different they look. Yeah. There's one I think that's in a very very, maybe a pale pink, and it's yeah. a lighter yarn. Yeah, um, I forgot and what I, that was called. Those are all out in the world in trunk shows. But it's, it's so interesting how yeah. different they look. Yeah, the, the one that's on the cover is this super bulky. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Right, so that's like farm yarn that's just super bulky, three stitches to the inch. And the very same sweater, here is, oops, that's the back of it. This is identical for my friends in warm climates. Yeah. In also three stitches to the inch. Ooh. I love that. Um, knit in a yarn from Habu called A188. You gotta love that name. Um, <laughs> and it's paper and cotton spun together. It weighs nothing. So I have, I have a version of that, a V-neck version in black that I constantly wear over tank tops beyond a certain age. I don't feel like I need to, that doesn't need to be out. And yeah, <laughs> you ever get, I, I, people who have been in my live classes, this happens all the time. Like when I am wearing something that maybe isn't totally sleeveless, but like, uh, you know, like a little short sleeve and I'm gesticulating and you feel it, you feel yes. it move. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Yeah. Like I can, oh, look at that. <laughs> Which is all good. It's fine. But yeah, sometimes I, I want to be a little more covered up, but I don't want the heat. So that yarn is great for that. It's knitted at three stitches to the inch. It's done in a jiffy and you kind of learn the process. But I don't have any of those. The closest I have is, this also works. This is the wide cotton oh, yeah, yeah. you can see what the fabric is like i love this that one, one is um uh, starts with an l i can't remember their damn names leone leone this I is not open its method but we just did a little kind of knit along um this one is in the round and bottom up so it's still seamless but it's not um it's not the the coconuts method but yeah this this um Nice light yarn from Habu is great if you don't want the heat. You know, there's so many, I, I, keep, I keep seeing people posting and now I'm getting like thoroughly freaked out. I keep seeing people posting like all stockinette based stuff, like really simple or garter and saying like, no one's in the mood to knit complicated things. Well, I've been working on this design for, I don't know how long. Oh, timing. And this is gonna be the fall you know, it's got integrated pockets. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff. And then it's a pullover or a cardigan and there's a kid's version. And I'm like, oh God, do people not want to knit anything that's not stuck in it now? Cause this has been the last eight months of my life. Right. So that's going to be- No, I think if you take them summer. through it, they'll be fine. I also think that people are kind of up for- um, Sorry, I just read a funny comment. A they're up for uh, a good challenge because we are ever so challenged in other ways. A distraction, a distracting challenge. I think you can definitely lose yourself in the cables. And Absolutely. I just, I love having these integrated pockets so much. Um, PJ just said, my autistic great nephew loves my wobbly arms. It's a sensory joy. Oh my gosh. I just had a um, another knitting student say that her cats love hers, that they're pillows. Oh my God. They're like kitty pillows. I just I can't. I can't even. Oh my God. I mean, I, you know, and let's face it, they're, they are getting a little wobblier every day because my, um, I think we're in good company, Patty. My husband works out every day, multiple times a day. He, because he's a, he's a, um, copy editor. So he's on the computer all day long. So he has an alarm set. Good Where it's him. like, oh, time to dance it out. He'll put on music, he'll dance it out. He'll like run around the house. Then he does his workout in the morning, like yoga or weights. I tried to do a couple workouts. I had a fit of vertigo, which set me back a really long time. I was really sick. Um, so yeah, it's just. Uh, I get out and walk most days, like really do a good power walk, but that doesn't do anything for my wobbly arms. So uh, yeah. I should. I mean, I definitely, there's always this when I get past, uh. so yeah. first it was, you know, the retreat, it was virtual affinity, which was more work than I've How ever done. It, go? In my whole life. it was great. It's it was so great. sad that your first one. Yeah. Oh, well. And oh. in fact, I think, I, I know you hate Instagram, but you're going to find it in a couple of days. Somebody posted um, the picture of the grand prize 
which in the, their grand prize kit, which included um, the whole sweater kit. It wasn't Yay. just, he did the sweater kit that has the ditty bags and the drying cloth and the, um, the I love that. rack. Oh it's my God. Very, it's very, um, oh, that rack. we don't really push it that much. I wanted a sweater care kit and I, I have like three. And now I don't care if you buy them or not. I, I freaking love the sweater care kit. That'll be posted yeah. tomorrow. Every I time we go to like, because you have to care for the sweaters after blocking. So when I go back to like rewash a sweater or have to hand wash something store-bought, it's like everything you need in the little kit. And there's no part of it that I don't use. People are like, well, can I just get that? And I'm like, no, you want it all. Yeah. I mean, so, are, 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 I mean, I, this is my favorite thing ever. Are, are, are people not nuts for them? I, I'm nuts for it. Like the, the thing that I lost to my husband um, because he does the laundry and now I can't, is the rack. He loves the rack. That pop-up. He also likes to fold it. It's very Actually satisfying. Actually made with two straps because I had gotten one that was similar, but it just had one strap underneath that clicked. And if I put a wet sweater on it, it would collapse. Oh, it would just yeah. like collapse so it has two straps yeah because sometimes we tighten the straps quite a bit mm -hmm. so that it's it's like bowed yeah um it, you know like a like a trampoline almost like yeah. a lot of tension on it yeah but i like the ditty bags because they're not flat and so it's, My st it's stressful putting net knitwear into a flat envelope type right thing. this is it this hugs is them yeah yeah, so if I lay it out, fold the sleeves in, fold it in half, and I can put it right down inside that because it's shaped like a barrel. What's, what's yeah. the word I want? It's like a tube. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's like a Tootsie Roll. Yeah, so it actually fits in there and the, and the zipper is really fine gauge, so it doesn't snag. There's no metal. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, there's another arm comment. Um, as an ASL interpreter and my, uh, and my student would comment on my arms while I was interpreting a class. Great. Oh my Thanks. God. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, Charlotte said detailed knitting allows you to focus on something other than just stressing things. I, I, yeah, I, I think that's true. And I think that's, I think, I mean, people are, are definitely knitting, which is great. Cause I can't have my. I, in times that weren't now, um, I, I would find garter or stock in it very meditative because it would let my mind just wander. I can't, I can't have my mind wander right now. I, I can't. I get that. I can't. That's how listen. I am with my, with my walking. It used to be that that was my time to like work out problems and come up with solutions. And now when I go out and walk, I'm kind of like, okay, I need something else to think about because there, there are a lot of things out of my control right now. So I can't anymore listen to soft music to go to bed. Yeah. I listen to a podcast that's interesting enough that my brain will stay engaged on those words and not the voices inside my own head, yeah. but then I'll, um, I'll drift off. So uh, Ologies is one I've been listening to a lot. Um, I Wei is another one that I've been um, completely obsessed with. So yeah. Oh yes, Melissa says Michelle Obama's knitting. I just saw that yesterday. Michelle, Michelle Obama is knitting? Yeah, so she apparently uh, gave an interview and she admitted that uh, she started knitting in quarantine, but um, she used an alias when going on uh, like help sites, tutorials video oh tutorials gosh. and stuff. That's so cool. Cause can you imagine if you're like, oh, let me log into my YouTube and answer questions. Oh, Michelle Obama has a question about this tutorial. Oh my gosh. So alias, oh. yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> so yeah. do, you, do you find like, do you have a particular set of not survival, but things that you have been keeping you sane during the pandemic? I've just been watching a lot of um, content, uh, as they say. Like, you know, 
trying to find silly, like, you know, Schitt's Creek. Sorry, that's an actual oh. word. I didn't, I didn't swear. Did you notice that? My, my husband brought this up. I didn't realize this. In the Emmys, uh, when we were watching the Emmys, every time they said the name of the TV show, Schitt's Creek, they put the put name up. Yeah. And I said, and David said, oh, you see how they're doing that? And I'm like, yeah, I guess, I guess anytime they uh, say a, a name of a show, they'll put, he said, no, no, no. It's no, only that, that exactly. show. Yeah. They need you to know it's S-C-H-I-T-T -T at someone's name. I yeah. was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just like, knit usually stuck in that or a garter and watch something like that. Uh, what we do in the shadows. Oh, I, haven't, I haven't started that one yet, but I hear that's fantastic. I love it. Just like kind of light fluffy okay. comedy for the most part, because I just, I just can't. Maybe I mean, and I have been watching like another one I think is really important to watch right now is a social dilemma on Netflix explains a lot. Oh, oh, that's the, the, um, the, the online. Yes. I, I actually have heard about that one. Um, yeah, that's it's, a, a online it's really thing. Good because they do like, you see, you understand some really horrifying things, but they don't just leave you that way. It's the same people who are sort of talking about how, how scary the whole, the way they're pushing social media to us in ways that we never, if you're in certain demographics, you never come across facts. Right. You're able to stay in your bubble, but they also kind of give solutions for it. So it, it doesn't leave you completely hopeless. It's like, okay, yeah. if we can get it together, we could still get on top of this. Um, it's going to take some work, but. Uh, so that one's Netflix Wh and which I never know how to say like channel, what delivery system oh, are shadows on? Right. Um, Hulu. That's, oh, I have Hulu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we alternate, we, we try to keep, uh, my husband calls them palate cleansers. So we, we, yes. well, we, we been some um, darker stuff. And then, so we're yeah. watching Lovecraft country on, I, and I don't have HBO. I keep HBO. Thinking, once I watch everything else, like that there is to watch, then I'll like get HBO. And I so that one's dark. And then we went to the Americans, which is an old show, which we haven't even seen, but then we're watching dead to me, which is yes. Funny. Dark light. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I and have woke, a... which is also dark light. What is woke? That's on Hulu. I haven't watched that yet either. It's good. Okay. Um, it keeps popping up in my feed to watch. Um, <laughs> Stacy, Stacy just wrote, just an FYI, I am not Michelle Obama. Oh. Thank you okay. for clarifying that. But if you were, it would be okay. Yeah. And we um, wouldn't know. So you could just say you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do we know really? Yeah. I yeah. mean, what did I actually the fact that she said that she probably is right because if you're not Michelle Obama, you wouldn't feel the need to say that. Yeah. But if you were, we're not. We're happy to have you in here, Michelle. So, yeah, Michelle, <laughs> we love you. She, she and, has nothing better to do but to hang out with us. <laughs> and your arms are great, Michelle. By the way, totally. Her, her arms are really, really good. I used to. I used to bring up Michelle Obama in classes when I would teach, kind of the fit and flatter thing, which is like such a, it's okay, whatever you wear. If you knit and wear your sweaters, excellent. Nobody cares. But a lot of times people would put on sweater and go, I don't know why I never wear this sweater. I just don't, what is wrong with it? And a lot of times it's an issue of balance. So if you, so, and Michelle Obama is, she has a great stylist because if, she had any weight it would be she would tend to carry it lower on her body i mean her upper body is fabulous and you would notice that she would always care if she carried a purse she didn't carry one with a long strap she always tucked a little purse under her arm here it did not that notice that it draws the eye up if you wear a long purse and the bag is is hanging down by your hips it it's more bulked down at your hips. And so she right. would always wear a little, she would just tuck a little purse right under her arm, which would draw the eye up to her fabulous arms. See, I, I, there's only like, there's, like a, on. there's a couple of tricks 
being a, a lady who's 5'3", um, that I love, that I have a tendency to use over and over again. I love, uh, I love a split hem uh, because then you can get a longer length and you can still put your hands in your pocket. I love, I love a, um, I love a, a short yeah, long yep. because I love the fact that it makes your legs look longer, exactly. but, it, but it'll cover the bum, okay. you know, and it covers the belly. Like a lot of times people will look at, um, like when I did, uh, is in here somewhere, Tortola, if they just see this on a model, they think, oh, it, that's too cropped in front because this one's a really extreme high-low, but it's not cropped in front at all. It fully covers the belly because hi, I'm in my fifties. <laughs> not designing, yep. not yep. designing a crop top dudes. Oh, but yeah. you know, yep. I, there, so there's a couple tricks like that. I do, I love I love a good high-low. Yeah, yeah. For someone who's short, it, you know, it just lengthens your legs. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's all there's a little chapter in the book about how to use optical illusion to kind of do things. Yeah. And if you don't want to, it's fine. People are always like, are you judging? And it's like, no, no. believe me, if you wear whatever you want. But yeah. I do find that there, you know, after doing this for 30 some years, um, women do kind of like, why don't I like that? And a lot of times it's just like a little balance issue. Like maybe the sleeves are too long. Try shortening the sleeves to get that line up there. So. Well, what's funny is, is I, uh, um, I, I'm, I, I, I approach it even more simplistically because I, I, I feel like sometimes um, people will get a little too fixated on like, I'm a pear shape, I'm an apple shape. And first of all, I, we're not, freaking fruit. So enough with the fruit. Um, like I shouldn't wear this. I'm not allowed to wear this. And one thing that I loved about this old TV show, um, what not to wear. Yes. I, I used to love to watch that. Is they would always say like, it's not about what it, it doesn't have to match. It has to go. It's not about rules. It's about what you're comfortable in. And so yeah. I'll often say about a knitting pattern, um, look in your closet Mm -hmm. What do you buy mm -hmm. if you never in your life bought a crew neck? Because every time you're in a store, you, you feel more drawn to the V-neck. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you like V-necks and how they look on you. Exactly. Maybe and the other thing that. along the same lines that I tell people when they say, um, you know, I need to measure myself. It's like, well, that tells you what size you are. It does not tell you how much ease you like. Like right. you can have a 48 inch bust and like no ease or have, or like 12 inches of ease. Right, yeah, I, I always talk about like measuring a sweater that fits you well, because you know. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I'll say. Like, no, Go to your closet, yeah. get your favorite sweatshirt, you know, something that you wear all the time, clearly that's what you like. So measure it and try that. Yep, totally. Uh, I'm just catching, <laughs> people are writing about, um, uh, their 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 preferences and um for me it's always comfort wins the day yeah kind of me too i i i do especially love now a, like i am never going back to a zipper and a button fly i'm I, done it's I, elastic I, waist to the end <laughs> i like a chuck over your head i mean i do find that the things that i'm a jeans and when people ask me to describe my style jeans and jeans and a sweater jeans ah. and a t-shirt jeans see so and I, I can't just, even do jeans anymore i have not oh, worn i, do, I, I have like not that. worn jeans since i mean i used to all the time but since quarantine started i have not put on anything with a zipper fly <laughs> there well actually this this one has a zipper but it's also a, like a drawstring this is very this is a super yeah, old maybe one that. i have a you know I um, that. but i like my jeans loose oh loose yeah and, just comfy, but I just want something I can chuck over my head. Um, winter, summer, spring, fall, who says I can't wear whatever colors I want? Oh yeah, the color, oh right. Oh, yeah. oh you're a That's winter, fall. you're a fall. Oh, I forgot that. Yes. That was a whole thing, remember? Yes, like, I, I was a fall. Yeah. Aut autumnal colors. Yeah, and I have to say I kind I am drawn to. Although for years I didn't wear black because supposedly I couldn't. And then I was like, says who? 
I mean, I am drawn, as you can see from the, the mess behind me, to more jewel tones. But the rule of like when someone said, oh, you can't wear oranges or peaches or anything. And so I really thought that for the longest time. I thought I'm not allowed. But it's fine. <laughs> I say you're allowed to do whatever freaking thing you want. Oh, my so, God. 2020. So Oh my God, it's late. We're we have burning. talked for an hour already. So we are going to be sort of together, but not at Vogue again. It's so weird. Like I, I don't, don't you miss the teacher meeting? And it's so funny because a lot of times I couldn't make it because if I oh. was, especially if it was East Coast, I was flying in. Like I didn't get in till midnight the night before. So I could never make it. Yeah. and never really thought about missing it. And now that I can't, now that it's not even taking place and I can't be there, I really miss it. I really miss it. And in fact, you know, it's always so funny because it's always the thing that we're like checking our watch and, you know, like I'll, I'll always have, you know, maybe a dinner reservation with, you know, with Melissa or Carol or Brooke or, you know, or, or you know, Amy when she used to teach. Um, and you're always checking your watch like, oh, can we be done? But the moment where you walk into the teacher meeting yeah, and you see all your friends and when Vogue runs it, there's pizza and wine always, you know, they always <laughs> liquor you up and give you food because they're the best. Um, <laughs> yeah. And even just running into friends at the teacher table, when you go to pick up your, your red sheets for the, your registration sheets for the day. And, and also the, the student, that. you know, it is, it, we have found that teaching online is fantastic. We're, it's going really, really well. I am surprised at how much easier it is for students when they have my hands like big on their screen and I'm doing what they should be doing as if See, I'm- That's how I teach live too though. I've always projected my hands on a big giant screen. And that never worked for me. Somehow this is really working well, um, but I, but you do miss the actual human interaction. Yeah, I, I am really happy that um, I'm getting people more and more to turn their cameras on um, because I have, I work with two monitors and I have my classroom in one monitor and I have me in the other monitor. And I feel more like I'm in the room with people when, you know, I see like, oh, you know, I'll, and I, you know, call them out, I'll say, oh, <laughs> I saw, I saw that face, Michelle. I saw you roll your eyes just then, or, you know, I saw you. And I, I like being in the room with my yeah. students, you know, but yeah, I do, I do miss that, but I, I miss, I miss seeing my friends. I know it'll be, it'll be such a party when we can all get back together. Who knows know, what it'll be, but we have to hang in there till then. I know the first Vogue when we're all together again, I have a feeling Were you, have you taught with them since the beginning? Were you, were you at the very first Vogue? Yes, but years I ago? Was at the very first Vogue in New York, right? Yeah, it was As 11 years ago. Oh, so you missed the famous teacher meeting. So Gabby still talks about it. And I have a feeling that the very first Vogue, when we're all together again, we are going to have a, um, a repeat of this. It was such a big group and we were so excited. It was the very first Vogue and all the teachers were there. And I was, an, I was a fairly new teacher on the national scene. This was 11 years ago. I was, an, I was a local yarn store teacher. So I, for me, it was a little bit like, oh my God, and I'm with you and I know you and I'm, but we were so rowdy that Gabby had to stand on the table and shout like, people, everyone. Like she, it's That's the famous story. It is the famous story of Gabby standing on the table. Oh my to God. At us to get our attention because- we God, that's would, totally gonna happen again. <laughs> we would not sit down, we would not settle down. And then the teacher, um, and this they only did once. The very first year, there was a meet the teacher um, cocktail party. And our job was to mingle and talk to the students. But of course, we're so excited to be with each other. We just keep like, like magnets to each other. And Trisha Malcolm would walk around the cocktail party. And if there were two or three teachers clumped, she'd be like, break it up, up. mingle. So that's the other thing we'll, we always remember to this day, the break it up. How funny. No, I was oblivious to all that because I was there as a vendor. I had a booth. I did. I, 
for the first two years, I don't know. Oh, and then I did Chicago. Then I, then the first one I actually taught at was the Chicago one. And then I started to teach. I was like, this is way easier than, than like shipping a booth around. Oh, yeah. Did you see the news about the Palmer house? No. They're going to tear it down. Uh, they haven't said anything about tear it down, but it is closing the hotel because That's, of COVID. That is such an amazing place. So now we are fingers crossed waiting to see like who will save it because it, there's, it's the oldest hotel in Chicago. It's an architectural gem. It's on it 8 million it's, preservation. So as a, as a total weird aside, I have a, um, I had, I haven't seen her since, um, way before quarantine, but a, a student here who was in her eighties, her mother was a showgirl and her father was a doctor and her mother was a showgirl at the Palmer house in Chicago. And she grew up literally backstage at the Palmer house. She knows every nook and cranny of that place. And when I, when she found out I was going there to teach, she was just like, told me every room to go look at and look up in this room and look at the, you know, it was so, it's such an amazing place. Yeah. And everything like the elevators, who, who goes into an elevator to look around at every detail, but every it, detail of the elevator, the, the grill work, the buttons, every, the, uh, every doorknob. If you so, ever get a chance, anybody to go to the Palmer house, go check it out. It's yeah. It is an architectural gem in a city full of architectural gems. I know, I know, but it's, it is the city of, you know, H.H. H. Richardson and, and, uh, and Sullivan and the direct line Richardson to Sullivan to right. It's that so, direct, that direction. Um, can you tell I was born in Chicago? Oh, were you? Yes. I'm a Chicago Not, well, there you go. I'm a An Chicago hour girl. in, look what so, I learned. Going to the Palmer house and going to um, Trader Vic's and drinking when you were a kid, you could get the non-alcoholic cocktail. And all I knew is I'm drinking out of a skull. Is there anything better on earth? No, my, my mug is a skull and I have umbrellas in it and whole pieces of pineapple. Um, it's just uh, the best. Oh, Aww, Bonnie says both, both Julie's classes and Patty's classes are awesome. Oh, you guys are awesome. We love you guys, but oh yeah, my God, right it, I, I've had you here for an hour of your life. I should, pro I should probably let you go. I, I, I suppose yeah. we probably should get on to whatever else it is we're doing. Well, I have another, I have another teacher training tonight at seven o'clock. I'm, I'm in front of the computer all day today, but um, then I had, I had some fun email trauma. So that was fun. A whole, I had spent two hours. My friend Pam oh, is not nice. here right now because she spent two hours of her life fixing my email. And so she was late to her knitting group. So she's not here today, but she'll watch it on the replay. Um, okay. So where can they find you next? They can find you next at, at uh, Vogue in a couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, anything else coming up that you want people to know about uh, that hasn't maybe, if, maybe if it hasn't open reg, but they can keep their eye open for it. Exactly. It's because I will do Vogue is going great for us. We thought about trying to, do something solo, but it's like, this is just working. And we're finding we can take, you know, we're able to take like 35 to 40 people. It's not perfect, but it's, um, you know, and it's, I feel like it's inexpensive enough that I've had people take it multiple times. T takes the stress off, like listen this time and take notes and the next time try and do the knitting. Um, so I'll keep doing the vote. I'm taking classes more than once. Yeah, I'll keep doing life. the votes once a month. Um, I'm doing uh, stitches at home, but I'm, I think that's closed and done already, but they can check it out if it's not that, cause that starts this weekend. Anything coming up that hasn't even been announced or open yet that they can like- Just, uh, we're working on time? new products. Ooh. And uh, that's the other thing my brain does is I'm knitting and thinking, you know what so I really need is- we'll uh, your wonderful assistant be sending out a little sample box like I usually get? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, we're having some supply chain issues. Oh, yeah, I understand. Right? Um, you know, it's always a challenge. And uh, despite what anyone may have heard, we pay the tariffs, not 
China. Yeah. And uh, I don't know where that logic comes from. Yeah. And um, imports have gone crazy. Yeah. So rather than rather than thinking that we're dialing it back, the ports have never been busier. So it's almost like what you hear is not what's actually happening. Crazy, right? <laughs> no, I know. I was, I was talking to uh, uh, um, an individual who owns a fairly large yarn shop. Um, and he said, supply chain is rough. Yeah. Rough. Everything's rough from the mills. Everything's yeah. back up. And it's incredibly difficult to try to figure out your inventory control, to try to do any projections. Yeah. Um, and it's, then, it's all uh, theoretical. It's a, it's a good problem in that um, if it had been sort of a normal year, I think we would have been okay. But people are also, I mean, God bless them, supporting their yarn shops trying to help small businesses like ours. And we love it, it's great. It just means that we were we were caught off guard for how much inventory we were gonna need this year because business is, is going good. And our thing is, is that we keep trying to push it to yarn shops. Right. So we'll run out of inventory on our website because we're trying to get you to go buy it from your local yarn shop and support right. them. So. And you know, I, uh, when you said um, things are going so well at Vogue, we were thinking of doing it something on our own, but then, uh, let me tell you, having just produced a show, yes. I can tell you, it, it, to produce a show well, um, which I think I did, and I think Vogue does, I'm sure you, um, did. It, it, you can't wrap your brain around the complexity All the moving of parts. producing an online show and how much staff you have to hire uh, an assistant in every room. You have to hire an IT person standing by on the chat. Uh, th then we had like pants suspender situation. Okay, if this, if this, if our login um, system goes down, we have this em emergency email thread. And I mean, you can't. So yeah, just show up and be a teacher. It's so much jollier. It's super appealing um, to just show up and be a teacher. I'm oh yeah, let me tell you. Oh, Chris said you were sad that my class is sold out. I still have one class with space in it. So, um, Chris, you can check out um, Chart It, Swatch It, Love It, which is a really fun class. And that one has a couple spots left. The other three did sell out right away, but I have one lecture and one class. Um, with and just keep spots. checking them because if you're like me, like I'll, I'll keep doing um, the Vogue. They, they're, they've got it down. I feel like yeah. they're, they're well run. It's going pretty smoothly. So, um, yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. it's a lovely machine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the, so Bonnie, so what happened is my, all four of my classes sold out right away, but then I told them to add 10 more spots. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you did check the day of, yes, you saw all four classes sold out, but then I added 10 spots to every class and then three sold out, but one still isn't. So anyway, that's that. Yeah. Um, so before we go, our people know, but there's a 30 second delay. So I always give them time. Here it comes to type this in. Um, since we are on quarantine number, what are we on now? Quarantine number 23? Holy moly, where am I at? Yeah, we are at quarantine live 23. Really? Quarantine live 23. Um, I started these my second week in quarantine, which was Good for you. in March. And ever since then, we have had, um, we have had a saying when we say goodbye, let me see if I can actually make this, uh, make this silly effect come on, which I did by accident once. Um, let's see if I can make it appear. So we always have something that we say to each other when we leave, which is wash your hands, don't touch your face. And then we added, let's see if I can make it appear. Which I was wear, just doing. Wear your mask. Yes. Eh, it won't come on. Sometimes I, I can't my make my, mask I can't right. make my virtual mask appear. There it is. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> so wash your hands. Don't touch that your face. Wear your mask. Knit yeah. on. That is what we say when we say goodbye. I love it. And there, there there's everyone typing it in the, I love you guys. So I love it. Thank you so much for just oh hanging out with thank us. Thank you for having me. It's so lovely to see 
you. Oh, that's that's the other selfish reason. In addition to the fact that I get sick of just it's talking. It's a good idea. Uh, it's just a, a fun way to see my friends. So I love it. Trisha's gonna come on. Oh my gosh! I haven't seen Trisha in so long. I'm gonna cry. Oh. I, I'm gonna try really hard not to cry the second I lay his eyes on her. Oh my gosh! Tell her hello. Because I miss her so much. She's gonna be. Is she the next one? No, she's she's uh she's quarantine live twenty six. So she's later. And um no, Laura Nelkin is gonna be next. Who I also haven't seen in a long time. So I'm really gonna love her. So. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Let's for go back even further than I had. realized. I know. Yeah. I, I had a feeling you didn't know that I was the crazy person that stalked you. And like no, basically my forced first, you. My first recollection was Patty Lyons at Lion Brand. Yeah. And before I saw it spelled out, I was like, oh, I thought you were Lion Brand. It was like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> No, it's because Blumenthal yarn wouldn't fly off the shelf. No, it was back. It was back from the day when everything was named after animals. So there was Bear Brand and Tiger Brand, and it was like this masculine, manly thing in the in the eighteen hundreds. Everyone was naming their brands after animals. Which which you which you want a nice masculine name for your yarn? I right? do. I do. Yeah, like for the longest time they had God God rest his soul Milton Glaser, the you know the brilliant graphic designer that designed I Love New York, yeah, right? Yeah. He, he designed the Lion Brand label, which I always hated because it was so masculine. It was black with the, like, it was just- Yeah, that's All surprising. the men that ran Lion Brand loved it. And every knitter was like, ooh. That's so funny. He should have just stuck with the heart. So they finally redesigned it. All right. Oh. Thank you. Um, mm. Let's see if I can end this yes. gracefully because there's always like a little bit of delay. Okay, so here we go. All right. We'll stop our stream. So say, good to see you. So good to see you. And I'll see you over Stay the rainbow. Safe. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Bye. I will see you over the rainbow. Wash your hands. <laughs>